Hey everyone, yes I do mean you, it's me, Silver Daddy. Are you ready for another exciting adventure, aka trip or trippin' with me? We're about to discover and share some amazing life stories. If I take a few sudden tangent turns along the way, don't worry, because I'll find our way back. Come on, climb aboard, and buckle up, because we are ready to start another great episode of Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Trippin' with Silver Daddy. We are, hey, are going to have a lot of fun because I'm so excited. We're going to one of my favorite areas. It's a little bit up north, about three hours by car. If we were taking one of these aircrafts, we'd be there probably in 45 minutes, but we're not. We gotta drive it. Going up 95 to an area called Space Coast. It's really, it really is a truly remarkable place. And I'm so excited because I have some great memories of this area. Space Coast is, the beach area is around Cocoa Beach, Florida. But it also goes all the way up Cape Canaveral into Nassau, you know, where they do all the big rockets, the things that go up in the air. Love it. And I have memories of this place from being a kid. Actually, it was probably about, believe it or not, oh my God, it was 50 years ago that I went to this area called Space Coast with my mom and dad. It was a gift given to them by my brother and sister, who's a lot older than me. And it was for their 25th wedding anniversary. I just happened to be the little kid and I got to tag along. So we went to Orlando, to Disney, my first time ever, and then we rented a car and we went over to Cocoa Beach. And it was only the second time in my life that I ever saw the ocean. I don't know if I ever told you about the first time, we'll do that another time, because every the first two times I saw the beach, the ocean, it was not always fun. But what was cool about this time when we went to Cocoa Beach, the good part was my mom taught me how to make sand castles. The type when you dig a big hole in the sand and you get wet sand where the water is and you start like scooping it out and making these like sand castles that look like ice cream cones and drippings. They're beautiful. Learned how to do that. The bad part of it, I loved playing in the ocean until something bit my toe like not bit it but like put a bruise on it and i screamed and went running out of the water i was sure it was a shark no it was some type of damn crab so that was one of the first times i got crabs won't tell you about the other ones but let's talk seriously about going up there it's also nasa we went to nasa when i was a little kid i loved it this was right prior to all the um, space shuttles that was going to be launched and they were getting ready for that. And they were actually making the runway for the landing of the space shuttles. Remember all this. Yes, it was 50 something years ago, but I remember it was like yesterday. And then you took the bus tour and you got to see where they were practicing the moon landing and where they also had when they first went to the moon, they had this little like golf cart thing they landed with that they drove around and they had all the rocks and sand that they practiced. It was amazing. It was also amazing because my dad didn't believe in all this and he kept making these comments under his breath and mom didn't really like that much. Cause I saw a couple times my dad got a little back slap type thing, but I love this area. I can't wait to go. I just hope the weather cooperates with us because down here it's not looking too good, but I know when I get up north, it'll be so much better. 
I can't wait. We're gonna have a great time. But like I said, we have a three hour car, car ride. And I gotta get up there, cause I got a show to do. Hey, why don't you listen to my sponsor when I come back? I'll probably be somewhere up north. Let's see what we find. Probably I'm looking at Nassau. We have the coastline, Cape Canaveral National Seashore. Oh, we got to go there. That's so much fun. You know, there's a lot of things we can do up there. But first, I need you to listen to my sponsor, please. And also, please, please, please subscribe to my podcast. Go to YouTube. Look for Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Subscribe. It's free. Free. And it helps me out. So I would appreciate it if you do that. But watch my sponsor. I'll be right back. You're listening to Trippin' with Silver Daddy or watching me on YouTube. Be back in a second. Hi, everyone. I am in my favorite place. Because as soon as you walk in, the smell of this high quality leather overtakes you. Yes, I'm at Leatherworks, my favorite place to shop. They have the highest quality of leather products in the Southeast. No, no, I'm not just talking about Southeast Florida. I'm talking about the entire Southeast of the United States. Their products are the highest quality leather and a lot of them are made right here. And the great thing about Leatherworks is they do not discriminate against size. So even me, Daddy Bear, I can even find things that fit me here at Leatherworks. But it's not just leather, everyone. If you have a fetish, I guarantee you they have the fetish gear that you may want, let's just say. They have a lot of things to choose from. Go online to leatherworks.com and that's works, W-E-R-K-S. And while you're there, you can check out, they have specialty classes. You know, if you have like a, fetish and you want to learn more about, you can go there and join the lifestyle program because then you get discounts on in-store promotions. Hey, everyone, make sure you go to Leatherworks. That's works with W-E-R-K-S and you can buy online. Welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. I'm still in New Samirna, beach area and I'm at what is considered a very historical place and I'm at the New Smyrna sugar mill ruins yeah it got ruined we'll talk about that so this was originally known as the Kruger de Pester sugar mill now they were actually two individuals that lived in New York, and they had an opportunity to make a financial investment, and that's what they did. They bought this place, and it's over 600 acres of land, and it was built to be a sugar mill and a sawmill. Now, they actually bought this place. Whoop. They actually bought this place from a guy whose name was Ambrose Hall. And Ambrose Hall, he actually was a preacher. And he was given this land, the 600 plus acres of land, by the Spanish crown. So the Spanish crown gave him all this land. He ended up selling it as investment property to these two guys from New York. So they built this place back in 1830, kind of old. So it was a steam mill ran mill. 
and it was actually built from some very special type rocks. The rocks are called coquina. And the coquina rocks, if you're looking on Instagram, these rocks are actually fossilized shells. These shells are actually called mosuk shells. So they're really tiny shells that are fossilized and they were actually made in the area. A lot of the old Spanish buildings are made from these types of rocks. They're actually brought out of a quarry type system. So they built this big sugar cane plantation and it was actually under the guidance of a guy named William Kemble. William Kemble kind of ran the place and it was ran by slaves. So they used slaves to do all the work and draft animals. Well, as we've talked about before on the show, in 1835, on Christmas Day, the Native Americans, the Seminoles, invaded and set fire to the place. Another Christmas Day fire and destroyed the entire place. And that left the ruins. So we basically had the crushing, what they called the crushing house, which is where the steam engine was. And that kind of crushed all the sugar cane into a juice. And all this was being done, as I said, by different people who was running it. Well, at the time, there was also a guy named John Sheldon was involved. And he was kind of supposed to watch the place. But when he heard that the Seminoles were in the area, and they weren't happy. He took his family over to the mainland and left the place unguarded. So it was right pickings for the Seminoles during that war, that second war of 1835. And that's when they destroyed the place. So what ended up happening is you had all this machinery that was left here. And the machinery was actually taken to another mill it was taken to the Dunlalton mill, and that's where they continued to use all the machinery that was left over. Now, in history, for a while, they thought this place was actually a Spanish kind of mission place, but they finally figured out it really was the sugar mill. In 1970, this became a part of the U.S. Register of Historical Places. So it's famous! And it's really cool. You don't get to see things like this very often, unless you go to Greece or Rome. But this is exactly what the ruins look like. And that's where I am! Hey everyone, we're going to take a short break. Please listen to my sponsors. You're watching or listening to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Oh, and don't forget, look below. See that button that says subscribe? Press it. It helps me. And also press that like button. I deeply appreciate it. Be right back. Did you know if you live within 20 miles of the ocean, there is saltpeter in the air. Saltpeter is very bad for your car. It can cause rust and dull your paint. So you need to get your car washed at least once a week if you live within 20 miles of the ocean. That's why I go to Majestic Car Wash. My blue beauty, I only trust. Majestic Car Wash. They're located at 
2781 North Federal Highway. You know, you have your choice. Your car can go through the 40-foot long cleaning tunnel or it can be hand washed. They also have a detail shop that can make your car look brand spanking new. So where do I take my blue beauty? To Majestic Car Wash. You need to go there today. Hey everyone, welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. As you can see the sign there, I'm at Canaveral National Seashore. Do you know there's only 10 national seashores in the United States? And this is one of them. Unfortunately, they're closing because we have extremely bad weather moving in. When I say extremely, there's already been some tornadoes in the area. So if we see a tornado, we're running to my car. But yes, this is one of 10 national seashores. This became a national seashore in 1975. To become a national seashore, it has to be something that is passed by Congress. So this was passed by Congress. And the other things to make sure you know is it's on a barrier island. Barrier islands are islands that are right off, you know, the shore. So we have the inter the intercoastal waterway, and then we have this island. Barrier islands are built by shells, sands, coral, that kind of stuff. But what's great about this place is that there's seven areas of different areas that have inhabitants in. The seven areas are the ocean, that's over there. You have the beach. You have dunes, that's what protects the beach, you know, from the inner part. You have the hemlocks. We have the lagoon, that's right there. If you're watching on YouTube, that's the lagoon right there. You have the most, the salt marshes. We talked about those a lot of times on a lot of shows. That's where you have all the mangroves. You know, I even did a show and talked about the mangroves, how they uh, send all the salt to one leaf and kill one leaf off. But the mangroves are very important. The salt marshes are. And then you have the pine forest. So there are seven different areas in here. Now, what is also amazing is how many plants. You know, this place is only like 58,000 acres, but there's like 1,045 plants in the area. There's a lot of plants that live in this one little area of the National Seashore. And there's like 310 birds that come here. They're not here all the time. Some migrate, they come and go. See, the park is closing right now. Everyone has to be out of the park. So we're gonna have some cars coming by. But what else is really amazing about this park is the number of endangered species that actually are in the park. You have three types of turtles which are the loggerhead, the grain, and the leatherbacks. The leatherbacks are my favorite. The leatherbacks are the ones, oh, there's a big bird right above me. He just flew right over me. I thought he was gonna come get me. Sorry about that. You have to be watching on my Instagram, or you have to be watching on my YouTube to see that one. Where was I? The leatherbacks. Those are the giant, big-ass turtles. They can get as big as a Volkswagen Beetle. You know, they get seven feet. They're huge. And here's what's really cool about them. When I lived in St. Croix, outside of um, Frederickstead, where I lived, on the south part of the beach, is the world's largest nesting ground of leatherback turtles from like the months of the end of April and the month of May and part of June, no one's allowed even into that beach area 
because there's so many turtles laying eggs. And then about 60, 90 days later, they all start hatching. So no one's allowed back on the beach during August, September when they're all hatching because there's still poachers on the island that steal the eggs. So St. Croix, where I used to live, has the world's largest beach of nesting leatherback turtles. It's also the same beach if you watch the ending of one of these famous movies that I can't think of right now was filmed there. I'll think about it and tell you later. So you have those are some endangered animals. You also have one of my favorites, the West Indy Mentity. You have the Southern Bald Eagle, Wood Storks, the Peregrine Falcon, the Eastern Indigo Snake, and the Florida Jay. All these are endangered species that can be found here on the National Seashore. And I did mention it's a great place to watch the rockets go off, but you got to have reservations for that. It's also a great place to have weddings, but you got to have reservations for that. It's a great place to do a podcast for tripping with Silver Daddy, but you got to have a reservation for that. That's why I'm standing right si outside the park border. But this is one of the largest pristine coastlines in Florida and one of the largest in the United States. 58,000 acres, and it is also 24 miles of coastline. Hey everyone, here comes the rain and I'm getting the hell out of there. So listen to my sponsors. I'll be right back. Hey, you know what I just found out? My favorite waitress at Flanagan's, Jesse. Well, wait a minute. I should really say one of my favorite waitresses because I don't want to really piss off Ashley or Ellen or any of the other ones. But one of my favorites, Jazzy, I just saw photos that she had taken when she was in Morocco and she told me she's a yoga instructor. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You never told me this. I'm going to start promoting her yoga. You can, if you live here in Fort Lauderdale, let's all go take private lessons with Jesse. Next week, I'm hoping to have more information because she is just too cool. And if I'm gonna take yoga, I gotta do it with someone who's cool. Hey everyone, welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Well, let's just start off and say, today was a bust. It didn't go as planned. I mean, I did check the weather, but I wasn't expecting the weather in like South Florida to be the same in North Florida. So I thought it would like clear up and be a good day. Who would know there would be tornadoes? And who would even know that the national parks and NASA will close down because of the tornadoes? I mean, didn't they know? I told them I was coming to do a show. They could have like moved the tornadoes away. It's amazing. Tornadoes. Did you know Florida has had at least an F3 tornado in every month of the year, but we're not considered part of Tornado Alley. The big difference is, you know, there's a big difference between an F3 and an F5. The F5s are ones that destroy everything. And they're the ones that always make the news, the ones that run through the Midwest of the United States. But Florida, we definitely get our share of tornadoes. And one of the main reasons is the thunderstorms we get here in Florida. I don't know if you know this, but Florida gets more thunderstorms than any other state in the United States. We're the thunderstorm capital of the world. And one of those big cumulus clouds, they say, 
they hold like 500, they weigh about 550 tons, and over 3 billion raindrops are in those suckers. So our average thunderstorm and shower lasts about 20 minutes. But the problem with Florida is we're a flat state. We don't have a lot of, well, South Florida, we don't have a lot of hills. If we have a hill, it's a garbage dump. But be honest, we don't have hills. 20 minutes of a heavy thunderstorm shower can flood the entire area. And that flood can last a while. Last year, Florida has had several major floods. Floods that were so bad that the Fort Lauderdale International Airport had to close. So we do get a lot of rain in Florida. And that rain is part of the reason we have you know, such high humidity. And then you got the Everglades because the Everglades is nothing but water. And that's all South Florida in the center of it. And that water evaporates, makes the thunder clouds, which drops the rain, which causes flooding, which causes then the mosquitoes. We have some interesting weather here in South Florida. North Florida is not supposed to be like this. So yeah, today I felt like was kind of a bust. I didn't really get to see and do some of the stuff I really wanted to do. Like I was going to, I was looking for the Coconut Cocoa Beach um, Surfing School. They have a professional surfing school up there. Not that I was going to get on no damn surfboard. Now that would have been a sight. That would have been, we would have just made our show probably the best comedy show you would have ever seen. Silver Bit Daddy, this big old boy on a surfboard reminds me of the time when I was in St. Croix and I was on a paddle board. Oh my God, you see me fall off a paddle board? That board shoots about 50 feet in the air. You would have thought it was a rocket from NASA. Oh, but yeah. I thought the surfers would have been hot. We would have go there. We talk about surfing and find out why Cocoa Beach is like a huge surfing area in Florida. And then we didn't get to Desert Acres I wanted to go see. This is a place like 20,000 acres of land and all these horseback trails. I actually love horseback riding. Done it many times. I'm actually pretty good at it, and I'm not afraid of these horses. They may be afraid of me, but I'm not afraid of no damn horse. But I wanted to do that, because I thought that would be so cool. Surfing, horseback riding, in the same day, in the same area. That's why we go to Cocoa Beach. You can do so many different things. Except when there's a tornado hitting the ground, and causing everyone to close and no one wants to be around. And then you drive six hours or four, three hours up and you drive around. That's six hours on the road. Well, I did listen to a lot of music. Hey, everyone. You know, this is life. You have to go with the punches. But unfortunately, things didn't go as I planned it today. But that's okay because you learn something. Check the forecast in the city you're going to, not just your local forecast, because what's happening three hours away from here is totally different. Hey, my helicopter's coming. They're picking me up. I gotta go. I'd be back. Thanks for watching the credits, and we are officially ending this podcast and this episode. As I always say, love, peace, and respect. You've been watching or listening to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Bye!